Are you looking for a laptop that can edit videos, but you don't want to have to sell one of your kidneys to afford the latest specced out M4 Max MacBook Pro? Or maybe you're already looking to upgrade to the MacBook Air, but you're not sure if it can handle your workload. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be testing out the M4 MacBook Air to see how it handles video editing. Let's get into it. This is the M4 MacBook Air 15 inch version with 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. So in today's video, I'm gonna be testing it out in DaVinci Resolve because that's the program I use. And it's fairly well optimized for the M series of Apple chips. If you're using Final Cut Pro, you could probably expect to see slightly better results. And if you're using Adobe Premiere, don't. <laughs> So I've loaded up this project and I've put a bunch of 4K footage in here. This is 4K 60 shot on an iPhone. And the first thing I'm going to do is just scrub through it, see how it handles it. So the timeline playback resolution is full and you can see I'm scrubbing through and it's there is zero delay. And if I try to play, you'll see it handles that extraordinarily well. So there's different footage here, 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 here no issues handling this whatsoever. So literally here I am scrubbing through, holding down the, the mouse. There is no stutter, no lag, nothing. This is, again, this is 4K 60 footage shot on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. No proxies, full timeline resolution, which is insane. But yeah, as you can see, no issues whatsoever. So one thing is I did also load this with some 1080p footage and fun fact, this footage actually, I won't say it stutters at all, but I can't scrub through it quite as easily as I could with the 4k 60 footage. And this is 1080p 60 footage. Now, one notable difference here is the codec. So this is H264, whereas the other is H265. And actually I looked at this and these files, the 1080p 60 are bigger than the 4K 60 files. That being said, I can hit play and there's barely any delay. I will say there is a very slight delay, but again, this is full resolution, no proxies, and it's still handling it extraordinarily well. So again, depending on the size of the files, you might want to scale back the resolution to half, but uh, it really shouldn't be an issue. Of course, you could also just use proxies, in which case this is not an issue at all. Like it really is not. So what I've done next is I've added a bunch of effects, some transitions, some adjustment clips, everything, just to see how it handles all that. And there's a tiny, tiny delay but again, it's practically nothing and it seems to handle it really well. This is again at full resolution. So I've done a couple of effects here and some transitions. Let's go full screen so we can see it properly. This is just a standard effect in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so a little bit of stutter when it did the transition there. It did a fancy zoom transition. Just a tiny bit of lag. Uh, again, a tiny bit of lag on the next one. Here I've loaded up four different effects all at once on top of the footage, which I've lightly color graded. So this is 4K60 full resolution playback. We got text popping up. We got a thing on the side. It's it's playing back flawlessly. I don't know what to tell you. Again, like I said, a minor bit of lag on the transitions. We'll see here. Just a little bit, yeah. Uh, so let's try to do half resolution and we'll see. It's at half now, it looks the same on the screen. And flawless. It did it absolutely flawlessly. Let's try to maybe add a transition or two here uh, just to see how it handles it. I'm just gonna chop up this footage. It does all, all of these things um, <laughs> effortlessly. Like not even the slightest bit, bit of lag I can chop. I can cut, I can rearrange, I can undo, undo, I can ripple, delete, nothing. It's it's perfect. So let's see, let's get a little transition going in here. Let's do a zoom transition and we'll see how it handles it. Let's see, absolutely flawless. Uh, again, this is 1080p 60, but bigger files than my 4K 60 footage. So let's see if we go to timeline playback resolution and put it at full, 
Let's see. And there it does stutter a bit. And let's take a look at the actual CPU stats here. So in terms of the CPU load, it's barely doing anything. And you can see it's only used barely over 10 gigabytes of memory. There's zero bytes of swap used at any point. Uh, and again, all of this is being done on battery. It's not plugged in. It's just, I could be sitting on the couch doing this. The other thing is it is completely silent because it has no fans in it. So you might be wondering about the other uh, big issue that people have been talking about, which is thermal throttling. Well, um, let's just say right now, first of all, it, there's, it's not even remotely warm. I will say I've only been using it for a few minutes right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a stress test and then we'll come back and see how it performs once it actually has been tested. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up Baldur's Gate 3 and I'm going to play it for an hour maybe. And then we'll come back and see how this laptop actually handles video editing once you're coming off of an hour long hardcore gaming session. All right, so I'm in Baldur's Gate 3. All the settings are on medium and it is running super smoothly. I will say it's been about, yeah, 20, 30 minutes in the game. This thing is pretty warm right now. I wouldn't say, you know, I was <laughs> put a laptop to my face. I don't know why. So I'm going to leave the game and go straight into DaVinci Resolve and go into our test. And again, we'll see this was really struggling before to do the transition at full resolution. So let's see how it does now. It's still struggling a bit. Great. Let's go into the timeline playback resolution, set it to half before the stress test. It was handling this perfectly. And now still perfect the laptop is still very very warm and again i say very warm again you put this on your legs you can't you can barely feel it through your pants um phrasing so after saturating it with heat and cpu load it still is performing extremely well it is scrubbing through the timeline let's do that test we did before with all the effects at once uh transition and four separate effects let's see Transition, flawless. Here comes the text effect. The other effect. And no stutter. It is playing as smooth as before. Do I think it's possible to get it to throttle? Uh, yes, probably if you really go out of your way to do it. And if you're doing it just through video editing, here's the thing. If you're working on, again, these 8K raw files or whatever, and you have a bunch of effects on top of that, all this stuff, and you want to play it at full resolution, it will be choppy at that point, I'm sure. But it's going to take all of that with you playing it back choppy for it to actually start to heat up to the point where it might throttle. If you're doing anything less, if you're doing 4K 60 at full resolution even, it's still playing back pretty damn fine. I will say there's a little bit, some effects can cause it to stutter just the slightest bit. If you put the timeline resolution to half, it's, it's not even flinching. It's playing back flawlessly. I don't think you are going to have to worry about thermal throttling on this laptop if you're video editing at all. If you're gaming and then jumping straight into video editing after, even then, I don't actually, then I don't see it unless you've been doing like maybe a five hour gaming session and then you jump into it. Maybe it's going to be a little slower at that point, but I haven't seen any signs of it actually being slower because of it heating up. It was pretty hot. It's cooled down already a couple minutes later. So that's the other thing. If you're doing that, if you're gaming for five hours, take a 10 minute break and then get into video editing. And there's no throttling. So I don't think you're going to make this laptop overheat just by video editing, to be honest. And it can handle pretty much anything you throw at it. The screen is amazing. Again, this is the 15 inch version. I think the amount of screen real estate you get with this is just beautiful. Like it's, it's a huge screen. The laptop weighs next to nothing. I was sitting on the couch editing videos yesterday just messing around with this for like an hour the battery life barely dipped it didn't get hot at all and i was able to do all of it 
sitting right there. It was super quiet. I, I could have done it next to my whole family while they were sleeping. It's a little weird. I don't know why I'd sit and just edit videos right in front of them sleeping, but I could have, cause it doesn't make a sound. Long story short, you can absolutely edit videos on this thing. Not only can you, but there's no reason to get a pro unless you want a better screen. But then again, it's gonna cost you a little bit more for that better screen and it's gonna be smaller. The only way to get something similar to this 15.3 inch screen is to get the 16 inch version of the MacBook Pro. And because of the chip configuration you're gonna have to go up to, that one is gonna cost you a lot more than this would cost you. One quick note before we end this video is I know a lot of people also think about future proofing. So I get it. You want to make sure that whatever thing you buy now is going to last you years and years and years. But at the same time, what are you future proofing it for? If this thing is going to handle your workload now and you're filming 4K 60 even, it can handle everything you're throwing at it. It can handle the effects, all of that stuff. What else are you going to do that's going to cause it to be an issue? two, three years from now. And even if you do, let's say you you are at the top of your game, you're making YouTube videos, you're making a bunch of money two, three years from now. Okay, in that case, you could trade this in and get a new MacBook Pro, an M7 or M8, whatever we're on at that point, and trade this in and still get a pretty good deal on that. You shouldn't buy something that's way more expensive than you need because you might need something more powerful three, four years down the road. That doesn't make any sense because Macs have the benefit of maintaining their value pretty well. So even three, four years from now, you can resell this or trade it in and still get a pretty good deal. So you're not losing the full value of the laptop. And in the meantime, you're getting an amazing laptop that can do pretty much anything you want it to do. Honestly, for 99.9% .9 of video editors, not just for 99.9% .9 of people out there do I recommend this laptop, but for 99.9% .9 of people who edit videos. The M4 MacBook Air is absolutely worth it. Thank you guys for watching. This video was a little different than what I usually do, but I wanted to quickly get this out there because I was looking for a new laptop to edit videos from, and I was convinced that I needed a MacBook Pro, but I decided to take a chance on this MacBook Air. And again, it has proven to be everything I need. And, and even beyond that, honestly, it is way better than my old machine is for this. So. Get an M4 MacBook Air if you're looking for something that you can edit videos on because it is just absolutely great. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.